So I know I didn't actually talk about the last week's chapter, but I'm going to be quite honest with you guys. A lot of it was focusing on the other inspectors. Like, I really wanted this story to focus on, like, Sasaki and the rest. And I feel like this is, like, one of the issues I've been having a lot with Re. Is like, we've been keep getting introduced to new character, new character, new characters. It's like, I know, like, it's trying to build up a new, like, cast. And I do actually like some of the new ones that we've got, like, maybe from, like, Sasaki Squad. But it's like, I want to see the old fucking characters after a while. And not to mention, as well, like... When fucking, like, you saw, like, Kaneki just go straight into, like, Uta's shop. And he just looks in there. He's like, oh, I've been looking at, like, ghoul eyes for, like, so, like fucking ages now. Oh, like, he's just gonna say, oh, i just been jing deep fucking ink to my eye. I know that's a legit thing in fucking real life for a tattoo. And I know that's, like, a fucking painful thing. But it's like, did you think that, like, during a mask shop and that every time you normally see a fucking ghoul wear a mask, you might think, Hmm, like this place might be a little bit fishy like that, but it's like, I don't know, maybe that's just like subconsciously like Sasuke knows like, or thinks that, you know, Uta is a good guy, and it's like, it was kind of interesting thing to say like, you know, oh, you make custom masks, and it was just asking about that, and like the rest of the chapter was like, focusing more on like, Arima Squad and like, Hijima as well, I'm like, I, I don't really care for these um, like, characters like that, like honestly, and then, even seeing um, Yoriko at the end, which was like, yeah, she's cool, but then so she never really did anything for that. She was pretty much the main reason just the why Toka was trying to act human. It was just like the, her friend, and it was like, you know, also what to fit into society. And, you know, we saw a bit of her, I like, saw that she was actually, you know, like Kawhi, she was actually like, um, like close to him, like when they were in school, and it was like, oh, you know, they had like some fun times. He was like, always this fucking beefcake motherfucker, like always like exercising. And then when we get to see, like, the rest of the fucking people, like, like you know, just training was going on in Chapter 37, like, we got to see as well, like, so, um, we, we got to see with, like, Juzo, you got to see with him, and, like, uh, Mutsuki, like, they were, like, talking more about the investigation, and one thing that was interesting about this chapter is that one of the actual trainers that they had, I think his name was, like, Tokage or something, he was, like, one of the uh, professors, he used to be an investigator, but, however, like, the giant scar that he's managed to, like, got on his face was actually called, uh, like, caused by Jason himself. And I was like, that motherfucker. I wish he was still in the story, but that motherfucker. But then, as well, that wouldn't have left, like, that wouldn't have made the stuff with, like, Kaneki and, like, Jason more impactful if he was still alive to this day. But even still, it's like, I kind of like that they're still adding a little bit more to, like, Jason saying, like, oh, we did this as well. Like, you know, he also affected this person as well. And when we get to see, like, Kane when he's talking, like, with a little, the little mouse lip, which I always forget her name, like, but you see, like, he's talking, like, you know, Tsukiyama is like, you know, you do know why he ended up like that, you know, like, what caused that change, and it was Ke uh, Kaneki's death, like that, and to solve that problem, it's like, you got to tell, like, you know, like, Sa like him, he's got to be a liar or something, say, oh, it's actually Sasuke now, but it's like, he's a ghoul, half ghoul investigator, and it's like, it's like, you know what, I'm going to show you some, like, um, pictures here, it's like, you know, Show him some of that. It's like, whatever happens, you will respect Tsukiyama's will. If you can do that, you ha you can show him what's inside envelope one. And he lo he fucking looks at it, and he's still, like, crying. And just, like, his whole eyes, he's like, yo, Kane, like, fucking tell me the details like that. And it's like, there we go. Fucking Tsukiyama's fucking back. I mean, I, I know it's going to be a while for him to, like, actually get back to up to, like, you know, speed is it. But I want Tsukiyama returning soon. I want him in a suit. I want him there going, bien. I mean, I want him saying what my shirt's saying right now. I want that shit going on there. Come on, give me a bit of Trebian, man. That's all I want. This is the Tsukiyama I want. This motherfucker here. Not some crap, like, but that's kind of, I see we finally got some progression going with that. And, like, Kane finally choose, like, he actually chose Tsukiyama over the family himself. It's like, you know, the, this chapter was a pretty good one. But like I said, guys, you know, this is my Tokyo Ghoul right here. Like, this is the one I like. I like. I do like the inspectors every now and then, but it's like I know it's trying to go into a completely different side of the story. But this is what I loved, and I feel you know when I'm comparing it honestly to the first like thirty to forty chapters of Ghoul to this, it's like I I've always got to go with this one always all the time. Like, um, that's just how it is. But it's like. I still enjoyed this chapter. I thought I'd give it like a seven. It was, you know, it was a good like a chapter. But let me know in the down below. But that was all for me. So thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys.